Shabbatat Shalom. Shabbatat Shalom, everybody. Hey, brothers and sisters, seed of Abraham by faith, Jews and Gentiles that believe in Yahche, Mashiach. We we'll greet you today on this Shabbat day and hope you all are enjoying it and giving praise on the Ahaya, Ashere Ahaya, with us and our Dono Yache and our mother Ruaka Kwadoshi. We are excited to spend this time with you all. Um, we also want to give a warm thank you for everybody that's been helping the church grow. Um, we will give individual gratification uh, personally, but we, of course, we always want to thank our family and our brothers and sisters in the church for all the work that they put forth. And concerning the work putting forth, we also want to talk to the church family and let everybody know that us being a church, being one in Yache Meshiach, if you believe in Yache and you believe in the gospel, then it's everybody's duty to, to share the videos, to share them with people um, that you may run into. They may not receive it at the moment, but if you share the video, you allow the spirit time to work where they can actually go back and watch the video when they're moved to. So don't be discouraged. We just want to make sure that everybody, if we believe in the gospel and we need to spread the gospel, everybody has their part to play in this. So we just continue to ask you guys to continue sharing the videos, con continue sharing the information so that it can reach the four corners of the earth and everybody will have the reward being the part of the church. So. Praise you, Archie. Uh, today, a uh, little discussion today with you, dear brothers and sisters, is concerning whether Jerusalem is in Africa. This has been a topic of debate for much time, and thankfully, we have Yache and the law and the testimony. So we can search the records and see whether this is actually true, because due to the lack of confiding in the law and the testimony where light dwells, this topic has been much debate, but through the scriptures, we can see and know the truth. So, according to the book of Jubilees, chapter 8 through chapter 10, details the land apportioned to Ham, and it is indeed what is called the continent of Africa today, along with a portion of the Sinai Peninsula. His land is from the west of the river in the Sinai Peninsula called Wadi El Arish, which is the biblical river of Sihor, according to Joshua chapter 13, verse 3, going straight down to the Red Sea, then goes along East African coast, of past East African rift zone. The East African rift zone is the volcanic area down there by Kenya. You can Google the East African rift zone and see that area. And then his allotment continues south around the bottom. So you have South Africa around the South Atlantic Ocean, which is, according to the Jubilees, is known as the Sea of Atel. And then it comes around to North Africa, to the North Atlantic Ocean, which is known in the Book of Jubilees as the Sea of Mauk. Then his land comes to the north, with North Africa to the Mediterranean Sea as his northern border, which is called the Great Sea in the Book of Jubilees. So according to the Hebrew records, we can see exactly what the land of Ham is to help identify whether Shem's lot, where Jerusalem is, could possibly be in the land of Ham. Uh, can we read Jubilees chapter 8, verse 22 to 24, please? Sure. Jubilees chapter 8, verse 22. And for Ham came forth the second portion, beyond the Gihon. The Gihon is the Nile River. Know this. The Nile is called Gihon. The Nile is not called the river of Egypt. There's a difference. Okay? So, so his portion is to the west, towards the Gihon. And the, where this angel Beyond is, the Gihon. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you for correction. Yeah. Where this angel was standing when he was given the allotment for the sons of Noah, they were in what is known today as Armenia. Jubilee chapter 5, verse 27 and 28. And the water prevailed on the face of the earth five months, one hundred and fifty days. And the ark went and rested on the top of Lubar, one of the mountains of Ararat. And he's looking out, all right? So he's pointing beyond the Gion, towards the south, to the right of the garden. The garden he's referring to is the Garden of Eden. 
and the garden is in the midst of Shem's land. Jubilee chapter 8 verse 17 to 21 This portion came forth by lot for Shem and his sons, that they should possess it forever unto his generations forevermore. And Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons, and he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy. For he had said, Blessed be Ahayah Lahayim of Shem, and may Ahayah dwell in the dwelling of Shem. And he knew that the garden of Eden is the holy of holies, and the dwelling of Ahayah, and Mount Sinai the center of the desert, and Mount Zion the center of the navel of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other. And he blessed the Alahayim of Alahayims, who had put the word of Ahayah into his mouth, and Ahayah forevermore. And he knew that a blessed portion and a blessing had come to Shem and his sons unto the generations forever. So look to the west of it, that's over on the side towards Africa, going away from Saudi Arabia. All right, uh, can you continue? So uh, beyond the Gihon, toward the south, to the right of the garden. And that lets you know where he's standing from, because if the Garden of Eden is in the Middle East, just picture the Arabia area for right now. And he says to the right of the garden, where does that point you to? To Africa, okay? And it extends toward the south, and it extends to all the mountains of fire. And those mountains of fire is the volcanic mountains called the East Africa Rift Zone, okay? And it extends toward the west to the Sea of Atel. That's the South Atlantic Ocean. So you can see I'm going down the Nile, come down to the East African Rift Zone, which are the biblical mountains of fire. And this is all down the east coast of Africa. Then it comes to the Sea of Atel. It's all South Africa and the South Atlantic Ocean. Continue. And it extends toward the west till it reaches the Sea of Mu. And then it keeps going. It comes from the South Atlantic Ocean and keeps going up to the North Atlantic Ocean, which is the Sea of Mu. It's, it's the angels described in the land of Africa. Continue. That sea into which everything which is not destroyed descends. It's speaking of the North Atlantic Ocean. Continue. And it goes forth towards the north to the limits of Gadar. So now we're going from the North Atlantic Ocean to the limits of Gadir. Good. Now, Good deal. now this is interesting because there is still evidence of this Gadir in the names of places in North Africa and Spain to this day. The limits of Gadir is what is known today as the Strait of Cadiz or Agadir in Morocco. And then you, they also have the word Gades or Gades in Spain. This is the area of the ancient the limits of Gadir. So you can see how these, these some of the names are still in the places to this day. Continue. And it goes forth to the coast of the waters of the sea, to the waters of the Great Sea. The waters of the Great Sea is the Mediterranean. It just describe the whole border of what we know as Africa today. Continue. To the draws near to the River Gihon. So see how it comes all the way back around to the River Gihon. All right, continue. And goes along the river Gihon to the reaches the right of the Garden of Eden. And this is the land which came forth for Ham, as the portion which he was to occupy forever for himself and his sons unto their generation forever. Notice this is all the portion of Ham. This land does not belong to Shem. It is for Ham and his sons forever. By the portion that Ham was given, it would be against scripture for Shem's lot to be in Ham's. Canaan was cursed for going into Shem's lot which is the Middle East. That's why Jerusalem could not have been in Africa, because that would be against the law. We look at Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 14. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark, which they of old time have set in their inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that Ahayah the Elohim giveth thee to possess it. Now we see this law given in the days of Moses, and we're going to look back in Jubilees when the sons of Noah were appointed their lands, this law stood. Let's look at Jubilees chapter 9, verse 14 and 15 to see after the children were told where the lands were, the agreement that was made. Jubilees chapter 9, verse 14. And thus the sons of Noah divided unto their sons in the presence of Noah their father. And he bound them all by an oath imprecating a curse on every one that sought to seize the portion which had not fallen to him by his lot. And they all said, So be it. 
so be it for themselves and their sons forever throughout their generations to the day of judgment. So you will see this covenant lasts forever. On which Ahaya Alahayam shall judge them with a sword and with fire for all the unclean wickedness of their errors, wherewith they have filled the earth with transgression and uncleanness and fornication and sin. Alright, so can you read uh, Jubilees chapter 9 verse 1 so we can see what Ham allotted his children in that land of Africa as we know it today. And Ham divided amongst his sons. The first portion came forth for Cush toward the east. Cush towards the east. So Cush land started in East Africa. And that's today known as Sudan, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Somalia, and Djibouti. That's the biblical land of Cush, according to what was allotted to him. Right? Continue. And to the west of him, for Mizraim. So then you go to the west. That's yeah, so you go right up above Sudan to the west is literal Egypt, upper and lower Egypt, including the Sinai Peninsula up to the river called Wadi Al Aresh. That's the land of Egypt. All right, continue. And to the west of him for Put. And now we go over to the west of Egypt in what we know as North Africa today. And that's Libya, Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, West Sahara, Mauritania, Mali, North Mali, Niger, Chad, Senegal, and Gambia. That is the biblical land of Put, right? According to what was allotted to him, right? And to the west of him, and to the west thereof, on the sea for Canaan. Now, to the west of him, when you go west of North Africa, that leads you into what we know as West Africa today. And they said to the sea, that sea is the Sea of Atel. So all that sea of the South Atlantic Ocean, that's the land of Canaan. Canaan's land is what is known today as Sub-Saharan Africa. That is the actual land of Canaan, okay? It would have been a transgression of the law for Shem to have taken any land in Africa. It would be against Ahia's righteousness to have given Shem Ham's land. Can you read Jubilees? Chapter 10, verse 28 to 34, please. Jubilee chapter 10, verse 28. And Ham and his sons went into the land which he was to occupy, which he acquired as his portion in the land of the south. It confirms again Ham's land is to the south. They divided the whole earth, which was Africa, what we know as the Middle East, Asia, and Europe. The land to the south is Africa, along with up to the Sinai Peninsula. And the land in the middle is what we know as the Middle East today and a little bit more. And then the land of Europe and Asia is the land of Japheth. So you can see how the scriptures show that that truly is Ham's land and it did not belong to Shem. Right? And Canaan saw that the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt, that it was very good. Now note, they left from the mountains of Ararat up in Armenia, right? They left, and as they're going down, because Ham is leading his children to their land in the south, Canaan sees the, uh, what did they say that he saw? The, the uh, Lebanon. Land. He saw Lebanon to the river of Egypt. Notice, it didn't say to the Gihon. It said to the river of Egypt. That is that Wadi al Aresh. So he saw the land in the lot of Shem. If this wasn't in the lot of Ham, okay? Continue. That it was very good. And he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west, that is, to the sea. You see that Canaan didn't go to West Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa like he was supposed to. He stayed in Shem's line. Continue. And he dwelt in the land of Lebanon, eastward and westward, from the border of Jordan and from the border of the sea. And Ham his father and Cush and Mishraim his brother said unto him, Thou hast settled in a land which is not thine. Now that lets you know he wasn't in Africa. He's right. settling in Shem's lot. He's not in Africa. His father's telling him that land is not yours. All right. right? Continue. And which did not fall to us by lot. Do not do so. For if thou doest do so, thou and thy sons will fall in the land and be accursed through sedition. For by sedition ye have settled, and by sedition will thy children fall. And thou shalt be rooted out forever. Right. Dwell not in the dwelling of Shem. That lets you know what's that area from Wadi Al Aresh to Lebanon, the Middle East, right. as we know today. That's the land of Shem. <laughs> that's the land where Jerusalem is. 
Continue. For to Shem and to his sons did it come by their lot. As the scriptures say, they cannot be undone. That's right. All right. Continue. Cursed art thou, and cursed shalt thou be beyond all the sons of Noah. But the curse by which we bound ourselves by an oath in the presence of the holy judge and in the presence of Noah our father. But he did not hearken unto them and dwelt in the land of Lebanon from Hamath to the entering of Egypt. And Hamath is what is known as Hamath Syria to this day. So you see, he dwelt from Hamath Syria down to Wadi al Aresh. That was the quote unquote land of Israel from the scriptures that. Canaan went into and dwelt in the land of Lebanon from Hamath to the entering of Egypt, he and his sons to this day. And for this reason, the land is named Canaan. So, you see why the land is named Canaan because he went and dwelt there, right. but that's not actually his land. And it's quite amazing because the actual land of Canaan, the true one, according to what was allotted to him in sub Saharan Africa, is where you can find the Israelites to this day, known as the Bantu people. Now, Shem's lot did not fall into Africa, but started on the east of the river in the Sinai Peninsula, which is the biblical river Sihor, and it's also called the river of Egypt in Jubilees 10 and 29. That river is called Wadi El Arish River in the Sinai Peninsula today. So it would be against the scriptures if Jerusalem was in Africa. The land of Israel is in what is called the Middle East today. The Shemites still predominantly live in Shem's lot as well. You have Moabites, the Ammonites, the Ishmaelites, the Arabians, the Keturites, the Bedouin people. You have the Babylonians in Iraq, the Assyrians in Nineveh, Iraq, Armenia, Azerbaijan in East Turkey. You have the Persians in Elam, Iran, up to India. And then you have the, the Arameans, the ancient people of Aram in Syria and Mesopotamia. And then you have the Edomites there in the modern state of Israel and scattered into other countries as well all over the world. So among other nations that are still over in the Middle East, Shem's children are still there to this day. Now in truth, there are Shemites living in Africa among the Hamites today with travel and whatnot. Many people are living in different places among the world. Even the Japhetites are starting to make their way into Africa, taking advantage of the poor Israelites there and what the Ten Horns have done to Africa by subjugating it with the Berlin Conference. 1884. Nonetheless, the original land does belong to the Hamites today, even though their land has been taken from them. And as we read in the scriptures, people are going to be cursed for taking other people's lands. Shem's lot, according to Jubilees, is the middle of the earth, which is majority of the Middle East today, as it is called today, in part excluding Egypt. Uh, if we look at Genesis chapter 15, verse 18, to see the promise that was given to Abraham to confirm that that land where Jerusalem would be did not include what was given to Ham in Africa. In the same day, I have made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land. From the river of Egypt, that's the Wadi al Aresh, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. And that goes all the way up to Mesopotamia. So you see scripturally, he was in promise in Abraham's land. His land is in Shem because he's of the seed of Shem. And we can look at Shem's land in Jubilees chapter 8, verse 12 to 17, please. Jubilees chapter 8, verse 12. And there came forth on the writing at Shem's lot, the middle of the earth, which he should take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generations of eternity. From the middle of the mountain range of Rapha, now note that it said the mountain range of Rapha. That mountain range is the Himalayas, the Kunlun Shan, and the Tian Shan. That's where his land starts from, all right? From the mouth of the water, from the river Tina. The river Tina is the Ganges River. So this is showing you start from over in India. Now we're gonna work our way all the way over to the Mediterranean Sea. Continue. And its portion goes toward the west through the midst of this river, and it extends till it reaches the water of the abysses out of which this river goes forth and pours its waters into the Sea of Meat. The Sea of Meat is the Sea of Bengal and the Indian Ocean, right? And this river flows into the Great Sea. 
And all that is toward the north is Japheth. And that's because all that's towards the north from the Himalayas, the Tian Shan, and the Kunlu Shan, and the Ganges River, that's China, uh, Mongolia, and those areas and whatnot. And then Russia up above that, that's all Japheth, all right? And all that is toward the south belongs to Shem. India, Azerbaijan, I mean, India, Azerbaijan, you have, uh, what is that other? Pakistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, that's all Shem's land, all right? And it extends till it reaches Karaso. And so he started from the far side over in India, from the Ganges and the mountain range of Rafa, and brought it all the way over to Karaso. Karaso is actually the center of the Sinai Peninsula. He showed where his land goes from India all the way over to that river Wadi al in the Sinai Peninsula. This is in the bosom of the tongue which looks toward the south. And that's how you know it's right in the middle. It's in the bosom of the tongue which looks towards the south. That tongue is the Sinai Peninsula because when the angel was looking at it from above, it literally looks like a tongue sticking out and it literally points to the south. All right? And his portion extends along the Great Sea. The Great Sea is the Mediterranean. All right, continue. And it extends in a straight line till it reaches the west of the tongue which looks toward the south. So this sea is named the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And it turns from here toward the south, toward the mouth of the great sea on the shore of its waters. Notice it's on the shore. So when it passes Wadi al Aresh, his, he doesn't go into Ham's land. It's on the shore. It's speaking of the, his land and the waters. All right. And it extends to the west to Afra. That's Pharaoh's island. And it extends till it reaches the waters of the river Gihon. All right. And to the south of the waters Gihon to the banks of this river. And when he said it extends till it reaches the waters of the river Gihon, now he's describing following the east coast down all of Arabia. That's all Shem's land. All right. And it extends toward the east till it reaches the Garden of Eden. And now he's going back towards India, going back to the east. And that lets you know the Garden of Eden is literally in Shem's land. All right. To the south thereof, to the south and from the east of the whole land of Eden and of the whole east. It turns to the east and proceeds till it reaches the east of the mountain named Rapha. Now this one here says the mountain named Rapha. This is not a mountain range. That mountain named Rapha is Mount Everest. And it descends to the bank of the mouth of the river Tina. And that's right there in Ganges River. That's on the uh, east side of India. This portion came forth by Lot for Shem and his sons, that they should possess it forever unto its generations forevermore. So there we see Shem's land is not in the land of Ham. Jubilees chapter 8 verse 18 to 22. And Noah rejoiced that this portion came forth for Shem and for his sons, and he remembered all that he had spoken with his mouth in prophecy. For he had said, Blessed be Ahayah Lahayim of Shem, and may Ahayah dwell in the dwelling of Shem. And he knew that the Garden of Eden is the Holy of Holies, and the dwelling of Ahayah, and Mount Sinai the center of the desert, and Mount Zion the center of the navel of the earth. These three were created as holy places facing each other. And he blessed the Alahayim of Alahayims, who had put the word of Ahayah into his mouth, and Ahayah forevermore. And he knew that a blessed portion and a blessing had come to Shem and his sons unto the generations forever, the whole land of Eden, and the whole land of the Red Sea, and the whole land of the East, and India, and on the Red Sea, and the mountains thereof, and all the land of Bashan, and all the land of Lebanon, and the islands of Kaftor, and all the mountains of Sinir and Amana, and the mountains of Asher in the north, and all the land of Elam, Asher, and Babel, and Susan, and Medai, and all the mountains of Ararat, and all the region beyond the sea, which is beyond the mountains of Asher, towards the north, a blessed and spacious land, and all that is in it is very good. And for Ham came forth the second portion, beyond the Gihon, towards the south, to the right of the garden. So... Then you have according to the scriptures, what's Shem's lot and what's Ham's lot, and you see that it's scripturally impossible for Jerusalem to be in Africa. It would be a transgression, because Ahiah said, don't remove the landmark. 
you have not set up Jerusalem in a place that did not belong to the children of Shem. Right. So in closing, we have the Book of Jubilees that shows that Shem's lot does not go past the Elorish, nor that his land go past the Nile River. So there are scriptural evidences to comfort us to know that Jerusalem is not in Africa. Good. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.